Good morning and welcome to this, our Cornerstone online service on Sunday the 16th of May 2021. Good morning to Cornerstone family, for those that are unable to be in church with us today. May the Lord bless you. And for those who are not of Cornerstone family but are with us, I pray that you too will know the Lord's blessing. I want to start to say by saying that there is a God who loves you, a God who cares for you, a God who cares so much for you that he paid a price that you couldn't pay for yourself. More of that later when we come to break bread. Let's pray. Father, as we begin our service today, let the things that we do and say and think be honouring to you, be pleasing to you. Let them be a sweet savour, a sweet aroma rising up to you. Coming in to the Holy of Holies, to your throne room. Help us to do what's right in your sight today. And I pray that in turn we will hear your voice, we will know your presence, we will know you moving in power in us and through us. And so we invite you, come Lord Jesus, come Holy Spirit and have your way in our hearts and in this service on this day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Psalm 92 verses 12 to 15 we read, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. The psalmist uses the analogy that we're like a tree, a palm tree, a, a cedar of Lebanon planted by the river that we will flourish. And he does that because it's something that we understand. We know that a plant, a tree, when it's rooted, when it's solid in the ground, it will flourish, it will grow, it will produce fruit, it will produce shade. A tree that's taken out of the ground would quickly die. But, but... When we remain strong in God, when we remain committed to God, we are like those trees that are planted, that will flourish like the palm tree, like the cedar of Lebanon. This morning, as we share in all that we, we will do today, I pray that the Lord will speak to you, that he will firmly establish you, and that he will cause that which is needed to grow in your life. Amen. Shine out of the ashes. 
We come now to that time in our service when we break bread together, when we share the cup and break bread in remembrance and in obedience to that which we are called to do. I'm going to read a few verses from the book of Colossians from chapter 1 that speak of something of the greatness of Jesus, something of his vastness. Colossians 1.15 He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. There's a number of sermons to be shared there from these verses, but they speak to us of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we think of them, in context with uh, the beginning of John's Gospel, John chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 1, we understand that Jesus was not just an infant, not just a man who came into this world at the behest of God. He is God. He was there at the foundation of the world. As we read in John's Gospel and as we see here, he is the creator of all things. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die? But yet he did. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you came into this world for such as us. 
Thank you that you left the Father's throne above to come in all humility, in meagre circumstances, to live a life, to die a death, to pay a price that no man could. For you alone were, you alone are perfect. You are the one who is without sin. So as we gather round this table on this day, may we know your presence. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Let's join our prayers together in the word that when the disciples asked, Jesus said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we approach this table, as we break bread and share this cup, we're not just remembering the life and the death of a man but we are remembering the life the sacrifice the death of the son of god made man come into this world so that you and i might have a way where we can come in to his presence to the presence of god the father not just for now but for eternity we come now to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 as we read our words of institution. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that when you broke that bread and spoke there with your first disciples, your great followers, that there was no element of self that was at work in this, but you considered others ahead of yourself. When you went to that cross, the scripture tells us that you went willingly, no one can take your life from you but you laid it down and so today i declare the body of christ broken once for all in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and lord jesus we are again astonished that blood should be should need to be shed in order to pay the price for our sin yet we know that from time immemorial men were making sacrifice week on week year on year yet none of them none of them was good enough to cover sin for more than one single occasion yet when you shed your blood on the cross it was sufficient more than enough to pay the price for all sin for all people for all time the blood of christ shed once for all As the scripture goes on for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes we gathered here confident this morning that you are the one who was the one who is and the one who will return we thank you that when you do O Lord you will return as a great and as a mighty king such as 
this world has never seen before. Thank you, Jesus, that you considered us worthy. Amen.
good morning and thank you for, for joining us for God's word today. And there are three words I'd like to share. Three words I want us to think about. It's position, praise and power. Position, praise and power. And I'm going to read from Luke chapter 13 verses 10 to 17 and we read the account of how Jesus healed this crippled woman in the synagogue on the Sabbath day and Luke 13 10 to 7 uh, 10 to 17 says these words on the Sabbath Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years she was bent over and could not straighten up at all when Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days to work for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give, give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing and I pray that God would reveal his heart to you this morning as he has done to me so on first sight this just seems like a, a lovely amazing story an example of Jesus miraculous power at work in the life of this woman who had a massive need had a need that completely disabled her in other words she couldn't do anything properly. She was bent over. You can imagine how difficult it would be. I've had back, back issues in the past and, and that's bad enough. But to be like this for 18 years, it's a really, really see a severe situation. But as we look close, closer at this passage, we, we find some amazing things. And Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself. I pray that you would reveal your word to each one of us. So the scripture that I read, it, as I said, it tells us about this woman who was crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and couldn't straighten up at all. Like, like I said before, this woman was in dire need. She was in a desperate situation, but she was still a, a devout and religious woman because she was in the synagogue. On the Sabbath, she was following the Jewish laws. She was doing what she should have been doing. But you know, that day changed her life. That day, meeting Jesus changed her life forever. So I want to say, number one, firstly, the woman positioned herself in the presence of Jesus. She positioned herself in the presence of Jesus. She made sure that day that she was in the right place to receive her miracle in the house of God, in the presence of Jesus himself, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The woman was desperate and I can't even imagine how she was feeling. She was desperate and she made sure she was in the right place at the right time. Perhaps God is speaking to us this morning. Do we need to get ourselves better positioned to be in the presence of God? In Psalm 84 verse 10, it states, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. The psalmist obviously values being in the house of the Lord, in the presence of God. He desires it above anything and everything else. I'd rather be one day in the presence of God than a thousand days anywhere else. And in 1 Chronicles 16 verse 11, it says, look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. 
So we, we are encouraged to look to God in all circumstances, in all situations, regardless of what's going on. Today and this week, let's continue to seek God's face. It's a continual process. We don't just meet God once and then say, yes, I know Jesus, that's the end of it, I'm finished. But actually, it's an ongoing process. Let's desire to position ourselves in the presence of God. And I don't mean just on a Sunday when we come to church or when we meet online like this, but I mean on a daily basis. Even for a short amount of time, let's set aside a few moments to read God's word, to, to worship him, to be close to him, to ask him to speak to us, to hear what he's saying. Let's be in the presence of God. Let's particularly position ourselves in the presence of God on a daily basis. Secondly, in Luke 13, 13, I read, Jesus put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Notice this, an encounter with Jesus caused her to praise. Caused her to praise, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure she would, and any of us would have done. 18 years of being in that position, 18 years of, of being bent over, 18 years of whatever was wrong with the spine or a, a backbone, or whatever was wrong, exactly. She couldn't stand up. And yet, one touch from Jesus, she stood up and praised God. On that morning, I bet when she was getting ready to go to the synagogue, I doubt she expected such a dynamic transformation that morning. But once she received a healing, she instantly and immediately opened her mouth and praised God. Do you know, we are such a blessed people. We're such a blessed people. God is such a great and mighty God. He showers his blessings down on us each day. And you know, so much so that we can nearly become complacent. And yeah, God is so good. Yeah, yeah, God's done something else wonderful. But actually, wow, thinking that God is moving. I don't want to get like that. I don't want to be in that place of complacency. But I want to be in a place like David, who says in Psalm 34 verse 1, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. His praise will always be on my lips. You know, I, I must say I'm not quite there yet. Um, there are times when we go through tough times, difficult circumstances, things happen. It's tough to always have praise on our lips. I don't always say the right thing or think the right thing, so I'm not quite there yet. But I think there's a challenge out to us this morning that David's saying, yeah, I will praise you. How, however tough it is, his praise will always be on my lips. And we can agree with the psalmist who says in Psalm 126 verse 3, The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. You know, when you start thinking about the things that God has done, and the things that God is doing and will do, it causes us to be excited. It causes us inside to be joyful, to have that supernatural joy that overflows. Today, this week, in all circumstances and situations, let's give God the glory. Let's give him the praise for his goodness. And even when we don't quite understand and we're not quite sure of what God's doing, Let's give him the glory anyway, because he's got us in his hand. He has us leading and guiding us. He's protecting us. He's round about us. And he loves each one of us, just like a father loves his children. You are his. And finally, there's a, a story from the story in Luke 13. We realise one more thing. That Jesus had ultimate and complete power and authority over sickness and physical situations on earth. You know, when I read that, that passage for the, 
uh, well, the, I don't know how many times I've read it before, but I read it on when I was preparing for today, and I thought how the ruler of the synagogue, how he was responsible for conducting the services and selecting people to take part and making sure that everything was done properly and everything was done right and maintaining order. He showed his physical power, his normal natural physical power in the synagogue. But Jesus takes it a step or many steps further and he, he goes on to demonstrate not his physical power, but actually his divine power and authority, which that is above, far above natural and physical authority. He demonstrated his divine power and authority that day. The leaders of the synagogue were more bothered about their animals than the woman in need. They were more bothered about it was the Sabbath and we don't do stuff on the Sabbath because that's against the rules. But they got it all wrong. They didn't realise that actually Jesus has compassion and ha has love on all of those who, who reach out to him, all of those who need him. But the religious rulers and, and people, uh, leaders of the day were bound by the rules, were bound by the religious laws that they had to follow. But Jesus didn't say that. He said, be free to the woman. And Jesus says as also to us, I have come that you may have life and life to the full. I love that verse, it's one of my favourite verses. John 10 verse 10. Jesus was speaking to the Jewish leaders after the accusation of, uh, of healing the woman on the Sabbath and Jesus answered them in no uncertain terms. He gave them, he gave them it straight. Jesus was a straight talker and is and, and speaks to us sometimes like that. But they were intelligent men. You would have thought they were learned men. You would have thought they would have actually understood who Jesus was. They would know the scriptures backside first, inside out. But they missed who Jesus actually was. They missed that he was the son of God. They were fearful of Jesus coming to challenge the status quo of their religious authority, of their little bit of power that they thought they had. They were afraid of the direct revelation from God, which was greater than what they understood. They were fearful of the power of God. In Matthew 5 verse 17, Jesus states this, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfil them. So Jesus wasn't healing the woman to really to, to get at the Jewish leaders. He was healing the woman because he had compassion on her, because he saw that there was a need and he could meet the need. And that the people didn't understand in the temple, in the synagogue, that actually Jesus hadn't come to do away with all of that, but actually he'd come to fulfill, accomplish the, the law and the prophets. You know, the law, the, the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament and all of the books of the prophets, and there's many of them, Isaiah and Ezekiel and all of those, make up the majority of our Old Testament today. But like I said, Jesus isn't doing away with all of that and he's not saying we don't want that, but actually he's saying, look, I came and I've fulfilled all of that. I've come to give its full meaning through the divine power that's, that was in Jesus. You know, when Jesus spoke, people listened. When Jesus spoke, situations changed. When Jesus spoke, people were set free because he was coming to fulfill the promises that had gone before, the promises of the Old Testament. When Jesus spoke, he emphasised the importance of receiving the full revelation from God instead of just following the rules and laws and procedures just for the sake of it, like many people did in those days. Jesus was and still is the realisation of all that the law and the prophets taught. He is the accumulation of all of that. You know, when Jesus came to earth, the Old Testament could now be fully understood through the power of the Holy Spirit revealing things to us. Revealing things that we didn't understand, we can't understand, but yet God 
reveals it. God shows us that Jesus was the way. That it wasn't just an Old Testament scripture and then it has no application today. But actually, through Jesus coming to earth, the power of God is fully revealed to us. So let's sum up everything we've talked about today. Conclusion. Position yourself in the presence of God. Make space in your day for God. Give God time. And that sounds silly, but actually time is one of the most difficult things. And I have to balance and juggle things uh, quite carefully in my days because I'm so busy. But I need to position myself in the presence of God. Secondly, let's praise him in all circumstances. Even when it's difficult, even when it's hard, even in those times of, of barrenness and you think, God, I, I'm struggling. Let's still praise him because he's worthy of praise. And thirdly, receive his power and the revelation of God's plan and purpose for your life. Jesus came that he might fulfil all of the Old Testament, but the people missed it. Let's not miss what Jesus has for us today. As a church, as individuals, let's receive that power. Let's receive that revelation of God's plan and purpose for your life. And let's move forward this week knowing that he is with us. Because when we do these things, when we have his presence, when we praise him and when we receive his power, we are never the same again. He changes us from the inside out. He makes us into a new creation. So today and this week, let's, let's walk in his blessing. Let's receive from his hand and let's know the presence of God on a daily basis in our lives. Amen. I do pray that God will bless you today and throughout the coming weeks and months. That you will know the reality of his presence with you and that you will receive revelation directly from his hand. That he will speak into your life. That he will speak those positive things where maybe negative things have been spoken in the past. He will pour in of his positivity. He will, positive, he will pour in of his encouragement. He will give you all that you need. So trust in him. Praise him. Get in his presence and receive the power and revelation straight from his hand. Amen.
Thank you, Andrew, for sharing that word with us this morning. As Andrew was coming to a, a, a close there, he said these words. Position yourself in the presence of God. Praise him in all circumstances. Receive his power and the revelation of God's plan and purpose for your life. God's got a plan and a purpose for you, whether you know that or realise that yet or not. God loves you and he's got a purpose for you. And he said, when we do these things, we are never the same again. We need to raise our hope, our belief, and our expectation. We need to fully understand what it is that God would have us do. Not only that, but what great power is available to us through him. Mark chapter 9 there is the account of the father who came to Jesus seeking help for his son and Jesus said to the man if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes all things are possible to him who believes the scripture goes on immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears Lord I believe help my unbelief how many of us and how often have used those words, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe that you can, I believe that you might, I believe that you have done, I believe that you are doing elsewhere. We need to translate that into, I know that you can in my life, here and now. I believe that you are able to use me. I believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are still at operation and that you will use your obedient servants to make them known in this world. I believe, I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Further, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11, we read these words. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Our God has more than enough to go around. His gifts, the things that he distributes, are inexhaustible. He does not run out. And so when we pray in faith, when we pray in expectation, our hope, our trust is not in what we can do but what in our Heavenly Father can and will do. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that in 
the right time, you have made yourself known to us. I thank you for those who have come and who have committed their lives to you. Those who are born again, as we read of. And I pray that in and through your servants, that you will bring a fresh wave, a fresh move of your Holy Spirit at work that we might see great things done in your name and in your cause. Take our lives, Lord. Shake us up. Move us on that we might be effective witnesses, true ambassadors for the gospel here in this place and wherever we are. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. May our Lord bless you and keep you safe, you and those whom you love, until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>